So welcome. Uh, my name is Kathleen McCabe. I'm the Director of Policy and Practice at Health Resources in Action. We are a public health organization based in Boston that does a whole host of work in the public health sphere, um, both in Massachusetts and nationally. And we're really excited to be part of a group of organizations that have come together to offer the, the uh, health impact assessment training. Um, you may or may not know that this is the third of um, the same training that's happened in three parts of the state. Uh, the first one was last week in uh, Holyoke. The second one was earlier this week in Boston, and then we're really pleased to be here in Brockton with everyone today. Uh, this is an introduction to HIA. Um, it will um, sort of ground everybody in the principles of HIA and give a sort of a brief overview of the steps of HIA. Um, some of it will be presentation, some of it will be more workshop dialogue. Anyway, I just want to welcome you all and turn it over to Kim who's going to get us started. Great, thank you. Um, I think, and I want to mix it up a little bit, and uh, I'll tell you about me at the very end. <laughs> um, but if we can start out, uh, and I'll talk about what's on the agenda and a couple other little things, but I'd like to really hear who is in the room um, and thank you for coming. People need to know about HIA in order to request it, and so now I think that enough people know about it that we, um, we do have people coming to us to, and I don't know if that's true for you guys too, but you know, we have community organizers coming to us to say, can you do an HIA on this topic that we're, you know, doing advocacy work on? <laughs> I'll say it straight out. Um, okay, so I think we're going to have um, Julie come up first and talk about the fall. Can you on the bottom? Rather than have you all wondering what happened to this woman, I hit my head, and the medical term for what resulted is called raccoon eyes. So that is what you're looking at. So stop any questions in advance. <laughs> OK. So I'm pretty excited to be here, actually, to talk about our health impact um, assessment in Fall River. It was rapid, um, so it took place over two to three months. And it was um, after a project actually got started. So the Quickishan River Rail Trail was a vision, a long-term vision among activists and conservationists in Fall River and surroundings. But when we put it in the open space and recreation plan for 2010, it actually took, got some legs and began to move forward. And in 2012, we began the assessment. And I just want to um, kind of give you so this piece was already done. This is on the South Watapa Pond. And this is phase two, and then this is phase three. And what has been completed is phase three. So uh, that's what we've been really looking at. Um, this property for the trail, the Quickishan River, is how the city got its name, Fall River. Quickishan is the Wampanoag term for falling water. So it has huge historic significance. Uh, a rail line came in from the east to the west, uh, bringing in materials during the huge days of the mill operations in Fall River. And that was abandoned, and those railroad tracks uh, were really the only way to have access to the river because Route 195, again, part of the whole uh, transportation policy of the 60s to get people as fast as possible from one place to another and certainly not to stop in Fall River, you know. So, um, so that property was abandoned. Uh, it was railroad tracks, um, uh, wetlands, uh, some homeless uh, encampments happened there. Uh, kids got down under the uh, 
uh, abutments for Route 195, did a lot of graffiti work, there was dumping, so it was really a very abandoned piece of property. These are some of the challenges. This rail trail, half of the population of Fall River lives within a one mile radius of the rail trail. Uh, that population has the highest rates of poverty, unemployment, and the lowest rate of educational attainment. Uh, the blend of ethnicities include Portuguese, Spanish, Cambodian, African American. One third of this population do not have vehicles. So walking and transit is important resources for the population. And again, just uh, Another, to show connection, Father Travasso Park is right where the uh, trail leads, and Britland Park down there further. Um, what has happened is Britland Park, through some state grants, had already begun to be developed, further developed. It was, it's sort of, it's sort of a piece of the Quickishan River property because it's, it was really, seen as isolated and uh, therefore even though resources were put into the park it, it still was um, people didn't even know it was there and yet it has uh, waterfront views it's very beautiful and so a soccer field was put in that increased access and since we've been working on the trail a BMX bike path has been restored so again, um, increasing uh, access and in interest in that particular park. Uh, also, sort of in line with the development of the rail trail was the refurbishing um, of the Father Travasso Park. So that, that now has water features and uh, climbing, um, uh, you know, uh, pieces for uh, kids to come and en thoroughly enjoy it. That will eventually be connected to the rail trail. So when we began to do the uh, impact assessment, we had to look at what possible changes would occur. Uh, and those could be positive or negative, or just stay the same. So physical activity, health disparities, public safety, crime, air quality, economic development, social cohesion, and social capital were all the possibilities that were listed. And I just want to say a word about, in terms of uh, pulling in stakeholders, it was a rapid uh, assessment, so we didn't have a whole lot of time. But we went to neighborhood associations, we went to community organizations that uh, were involved with recreation and open space in, in Fall River and brought them to the table and they uh, provided great input to the project. Um, sorry, can I just ask to, to say, since some of the questions have come up, like, like who are you and how did you get involved and how did people decide to do the HIV? Oh, okay, yeah, right. I don't know if your slides are there, but I can't remember. No, no. Okay. <laughs> So I am the coordinator of Mass in Motion Fall River, and do all of you know about Mass in Motion? Yes. Okay. Um, and that's the state's uh, program to address obesity, uh, particularly in children, but by changing policy systems and environments. Do you and live in Fall River? I no, I live in Fairhaven, I close by, and. So with that idea, we began uh, you know, to work with the city on improvements to parks, to, for walking, for cycling, that kind of thing. The, the open space and recreation plan, um, I played a role in that, and as a result, worked with a variety of people. Again, this was a very tort, short time frame, so don't let short amounts of time hold you back. Um, we were able through some uh, activists on that open space plan to really look more, 
use the plan as more of a visionary tool to look to the future. And so we took the rail trail and put that in a prominent place in the open space plan. And, um, and so that got that going. Funding became available through the uh, Gateway Cities Park program. And then what happened was that we're, we were uh, in conversation with the state that was working with the um, health impact assessments. And so we said, well, we have an opportunity in Fall River. Shall we, shall we look at that? And brought those community uh, people and also city departments and um, our, our regional planning agency, SERPED, to the table to, to look at the project and to look. And you know, for me personally, it was kind of health impact. Of course it's going to be a positive health impact. It's going to take an abandoned uh, piece of property that's all waterfront and bring it back to the community. It's going to take um, a community that was split north to south and bring it back together. How could it not be positive? But the health impact assessment allowed us to see that there were issues that had to be addressed or the more, the more incredible amounts of money spent, incredible amount of time and resources could all be for naught if people were not going to use it. So, so here we are. This is uh, phase three was completed in June. Um, we're waiting for the second piece uh, to be completed, hopefully in the spring. It's it's being worked on. It was uh, the two sections, phase two and three, were under different construction. So uh, Mass DOT is doing the the phase two, and it's getting close to completion. So, like I, I said. I should have put in a picture that showed the before, but this is what it looks like. It is magnificent. So the recommendations that came from the HIA when the report was written, and by the way, the report is over there, if anybody would like to take one with them, was around design and engineering, looking for high visibility signage, traffic calming elements at the crossings. There were three crossings. Um, trail lighting in non-daylight hours and underpass lighting at all times. The second two are not, are, have not been addressed except to say it's not happening. Um, and with the you know concept that the trail will be during daylight hours, will be open only during daylight hours. Um, and underpass lighting, uh, I think in this, this phase two, which will be completed in the spring, there are very lengthy uh, overpasses that the trail goes under. And those might be areas that in the future will require some underpass lighting, which has been done in other, um, on other trails in the state and in Rhode Island. So we'll be looking at that. But high visibility signage, in fact, uh, these crossings, in particular one, the Quickershan Street crossing, was brought to um, the attention of all the partners at the table by the stakeholders, the local stakeholders. They were very concerned about that particular crossing. Uh, a, a study was done, a traffic study was done, and it was found that there was really not the volume or the speed of the traffic to indicate any further than, um, than a crosswalk, typical crossings. Since that time, though, a large Walmart and other McDonald's, et cetera, were put up right down the street from this crossing. And as a result, uh, we brought in, the again, the Regional Planning Agency to look at that crossing. Um, so now there were flashers there. Again, the volume and the speed seem to, it's, it's a rather narrow road. Ooh. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, we're working on these issues. Next. So to maximize health benefits, again, trail use and maintenance. We have a very sedentary population. Uh, there's a 
certainly a fear of crime, particularly with this being a very isolated area. So there were some ideas how to address that and to advance social and civic engagements op opportunities within the new community space. So the question, if you build it, will they come? Uh, we've constructed a, uh, through actually working with uh, Walk Boston, a wayfinding um, signage to indicate how to get to the trail and how many minutes, so this is a walking wayfinding, how many minutes it's going to take you to get to the trail from a variety of areas within that one mile radius. We've been stopping people to interview them uh, about, and also online. So about uh, 150 anyway uh, surveys have been conducted and we're learning what people are feeling about the trail. They love it. They are seeing uh, this natural beauty that no one knew. No one knew existed. The birds coming in, um, you know, seasonal and birds that live there year round, um, uh, other wildlife. They're seeing their neighbors. And I can vouch for the fact that if you're on the streets of Fall River, people generally are either walking with their heads down or they are, you know, there's no eye-to-eye -eye contact. And on this trail, there is, you know, just a lot of communication. So you see that social cohesion beginning to grow and people beginning to feel, oh, I mean, people have said, this is the best thing Fall River has ever done. Um, we were concerned about that. So we wanted to have, um, when it opened in June, we wanted to have a number of events to engage people to bring them down. Again, the parks tended to be isolated, even though they had been restored. Uh, so we had uh, a history walk working with the Department of, Commun uh, Department of Conservation and Recreation. Uh, we had other partners do uh, yoga and art in the park. Um, Drums Alive is a part of uh, Wiggle Kids. They came down and through the summer, through particularly through August, we had just one event after another, including helmet, bike helmet giveaways. Fear of crime, whether real or perceived, high crime rate in that area of Fall River. But you have police who are, the police department is very committed to the success of the trail. So police on walking and cycling beats, uh, call stations were in, put in um, maybe in August, so people are very happy to see those. Uh, keeping the trail populated, again, having enough events, using those wayfinding signs to get people there and, um, and keeping the trail maintained, and I'll talk a little bit about that later. Uh, reduction in collisions was another opportunity. So, this creates a safe off-road access for people to get uh, from where they live to a grocery store to um, Health First, one of the health commu community health centers, to the schools to walk their children to school. But again, what we already talked about was those crossings on those streets, um, raising those, raising those in public meeting, and getting a response to them and then working on complete streets policy. Again, other pictures. That's okay. So to, to wrap up, um, I think what's really important is that uh, the, the HIA brought us in addressing some of these issues into looking to the partnerships that exist and the opportunities that exist. So for instance, one opportunity that was a couple of years ago was the Highway Safety Improvement Plan. And that was a grant that the police department received, but Mass in Motion was involved with. And we were able to do walk audits with working with Mass Bike and with Walk Boston, filling in information that we did not already have, again, within that one mile radius. Uh, working with Walk Boston, training 
uh, individuals from the community on how to conduct walk audits. Using our public, our uh, SERPED, our planning agency, to do a walkability study. Um, again, this is all through a CDC 1422 grant, which is addressing diabetes and hypertension prevention, planning and engineering. So Mass in Motion has been inviting participation and stewardship, so around maintenance of the trail. Um, again, those nonprofits that bring people to the trail by offering programs or by proximity, working to create a groundwork south, groundwork south coast so that, again, working with the Workforce Investment Board, getting funds to hire students to work on the trail in terms of stewardship to learn about environmental and ecological air issues working with the schools, police schools, to have a relationship where kids can go on a field trip to the trail. Uh, again, keeping the trail populated at all times of the year. The water department actually is a critical uh, partner. They have a lot to do with road restoration, uh, replacing pipes in water pipes, and in fact are in charge of the trail, the water, the uh, Quickishan itself. Working on the open space and recreation plan, which now we're ours is about to expire, so we're going to be looking at a management plan for the trail to put into uh, the new plan. Again, working with departments that fall outside of this city, as in DCR and DOT and bringing in local artists. We're working on a um, project to do murals in those graffiti uh, you know, tunnels underneath the highway and engaging youth and ser serious artists to come and design and create this uh, new art form uh, on the trail. Again, to reduce fear to reduce the sense of isolation, and to bring the history back because of the transient kind of population that cities like Fall River have, very often people do not feel that they are included. They do not feel as though um, this is home. And so what we're trying to do is to increase that sense that this is yours, and we need you to help take care of it, and we need you to uh, understand the history. So uh, we've been engaging volunteers. 285 tires have been pulled out of the river, which I told you was a dumping ground, by one gentleman and a uh, part-time staff member of, of uh, Mass in Motion. And he's just dying to get down there as often as possible and pull these tires out. Another woman in a wheelchair sits on the trail and sweeps away. We have a lot of geese and some trash, but the trash has definitely been minimal since the opening of the trail and as time has gone on. There has been no crime reported with the exception of a couple of graffiti situations on the pathway itself. So there is social capital increasing, social cohesion increasing. And thank you very much. And one last picture, please. So we I invite you to come down and visit and see it for yourselves. The funding, uh, 2010 was the beginning, sitting down with state offices, the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs, and, uh, and I, as I said, a piece of it had already been done earlier, 2008, I think that was completed. So this will be complete in 2017, so seven years. I have a quick question. Um, what funding did you use? What sources of funding did you use uh, for the project? Is this for the trail or for the HIA? Uh, the trail. Oh, okay. You know what, if oh, you guys actually, don't mind, if you have questions about the trail itself, um, yeah. can you, we're about to take a break, and okay. so I'm just, yeah. can, can, 
But if you have questions about the HIA portion, yeah. Uh, no, the HIA brought the people, you know, it, we, we were tasked to find the stakeholders who would be able to commit the time and the energy and, um, you know, had an interest in this project. And the funding for the HIA was that, that came through the Department of Public Health. And just so you know, that funding was from the CDC originally. Like that's. Yeah. I'd say I just said briefly that in my uh, eight years with the city, the work with the Department of Transportation to see that uh, collaboration, that what transportation does impacts health, has been a pretty amazing. I've worked in health all my life, so uh, that has been extraordinary. And to have that relate to build that relationship um, is something that the health impact assessment definitely. Uh, That's great. Well, thank you so much. And was this about the HIA or about the quick question? Okay, so we're about to have a break. So if you guys want to come to <laughs> Julie and take 10 minutes, please, if you would, and then come back at 10:40. Um, thanks. Sorry, no, it's. I don't think like. Yeah. Anyway, people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my, my question is maybe a question for one. Do you guys get a lot of